<coughs> challenges. So I hope you are working on your things uh, that we have covered previously. So if you have any question from your previous, um, you know, discussion on set, then let me know actually quickly. Okay. Otherwise, I'll start a new chapter, which is a chapter on functions actually. So do you have any questions? If not now, mm -hmm. we can have a session in which you can ask the questions section. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So let's let's start with let's start with 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 the functions actually. In order to introduce the functions, I would like to first talk about a little bit of um, a so-called relations actually. Okay. I would like to first talk about relations. Okay, the relations is really the next chapter. We will get into the very much details of the relation that what we mean by relations and all that. But today I want to define first relation and then um, you know define functions and do everything else. Okay, so, so relation is, is really um, a kind of a natural word, uh, word actually. Okay, you know, like we use it in in, in our in our um, in our in our every day. Okay, so we, we say that relation means um, that you know, for example, you can have a father to you know a son relation. You can have you know a brother sister relation, friends relationship, and so on and so forth. Okay, so you have you have different versions of relations already. So. So can you can you give me some examples of relations actually? So let me let me start actually. So I would say that A is a father of B. Okay, so that's one example of a relationship. So any other example? Any other example? Uh, B is son of A. Okay, so it would be same as this that, okay, A is father of B, B is son of A, A is mother of B. So, so we are kind of uh, relating one kind of relation, you know, with, you know, so, so, so imagine that this is representative of all blood relations. Okay, so can, can there be anything else which have relations to each other? Anything? Yes, sir. Number sir, six. India is Pakistan's neighboring country. Uh, India is Pakistan neighboring country. So, so we can say, let's not be specific, and let's say, A is a neighbor. Okay, it's neighbor of B. So that's one relation. Anything else? Sir, sir X is the spoken of Y. X is reciprocal of Y. Okay, so that's, this is good actually. X is uh, reciprocal of Y. That's another relationship. For example, let me give you another example. The kid A likes the game B. So that's another relationship that you have a kid a that like who likes the game b okay so any other any other give me give me some relations actually that you see in every day say i can say p is the price of uh book b that's another relationship actually okay so the p is a price of uh book b Anything else? Sir, a is a subset of B. A is a subset of B. So this is this is also a relationship. A is a subset of B. Give me some more. Other than mathematics, think about okay. relating the you know quantities with other quantities. Take okay? 
So for example, I say A, say, say A likes B, okay? A likes B, that's another relationship. J, anyone else? Bring some relationship where the one kind of things are related with another kind of things actually. <clears throat> hmm. So X, Karam, is, personality X is less than Y. This is also a relationship. What you were saying? Proportionality ke relation bata sakte Proportionality bata sakte hai. Hai. But wo yaha, you have kind of already said it that X is the reciprocal of Y, so you know, which is same as scale. Yes. Bhi, you know, think of think of think of natural you know things around um, things around you where the one thing is related with the other thing. So, for example, heart is a part of human body. Heart is a part of human body. Where is the relation actually? The relation is body. Heart to body relationship. Okay. Chale, theek hai. <laughs> heart. So it's good. Let's, let's rephrase it. Let's rephrase it and say that, okay, the person A, A have heard H actually. A have or has whatever heard H. Okay. So the, the, these are really, you know, some kind of relationship. You can think of more, okay? You know, everything is related with every other thing. Okay? So, so N is number of pages, pages in book B, okay? N is number of pages in book B. So, so this is another, um, what do you call a kind of a relationship actually. So relationship, relation is really, you know, you know, so what we're going to do is that we have the, all these relations are really the real world relations. Mm -hmm. And from this motivation, we are going to, you know, come up with our, you know, abstract definition of relation. So if, if I'm saying that A is a father of B, this is a relation so can I say that it's a relationship of humans with humans actually. So it's a relationship from humans, relationship of humans to humans, right? Yes, sir. So A is the neighbor of B, A is the neighbor of B, it's a relationship from where to where actually, of what to what. What is the choice of choice for A? Sir, it may be person or it may be country. Yes, it can. It may be person. It may be country. It may be anything. Okay. So it's a say for example as per Abdul Hamid example, it's a relationship from country to country, right? X is a reciprocal of Y. It's a relationship from where to where? Numbers, no sir. Which numbers? Real numbers to real numbers. Real numbers yes, okay. A likes the game B. A B R player. Mm -hmm. A B R player. A likes Sir, the game. human to thing. Say humans to say H is the set of humans and you know, B is from the set of games actually, right? Humans to games actually. So in, in, at one place you have H, you know, the set of humans and, you know, at one point uh, you have the set of games G. So P is the price of the book B. So 
it's a relationship from where to where. Price to book. Yes, so it's it's a it's a relationship from prices. Say say the prices are I don't know uh, rational numbers. Okay, prices can be rational numbers. So you can have a book of twenty five rupees or a hundred rupees or hundred and ten rupees, or you can have a book of hundred and ten point five rupees, something like that. It can't be pi rupees or e rupees. Okay, it would always be a rational number. so so it's a relationship from set of rational numbers to the books actually so let's say the b is the set of the books a is a subset of b it's a relationship from where to where natural to the real subset of b a is a subset of b is a relationship from uh, real to real so so So, so, so see here the Q in the previous example Q is the collection of the prices and B is the collection of the book, and in the previous example, you know, you know H is the collection of the humans and G is the collection of the games. Okay, so A is being chosen from H and P is being chosen from Q. So when I am saying that A is a subset of B, from where A is chosen? Can you tell me the sets? Universal set. Okay, so it does universal, universal set, na sir. The universal set contain karta hai A ko set subsets ko. Yes, sir. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm no. No. Power partition. A A is the set of uh, rational. It should be power B set B of A. The power set of A. Yes, sir. So so it should be the power set. Okay, I don't know about this is a power set of what? ठीक है मुझे नहीं पता कि वो power set किस चीज़ का है पर जिससे power set actually. So it's a it's a it's a relationship from the power set of some set to the power set of the same set actually. ठीक है so it's a it's a set uh, it's an element from power set it's a relationship from power set to power set. A likes B. now it depends on that okay a could be what you know you know a could be humans and you know b also could be a hu human a could be a human and b could be an object theek hai a could be an animal and b is the favorite food of that animal so it's really a you know it's really a really a, a generic um, uh, kind of a, a situation actually so let's 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 say that a is a human and b is a human as well then it's a relationship from where to where so this is a relationship from set of humans to the set of humans right so x is less than y it's a relationship from where to where real number to real number exactly so it's a, it's a relationship from real numbers to the real numbers actually a have a hurt h okay you know it's a bit a strange relationship but yes so we can say it's a set of humans to say set of organs actually okay sir ye human ki sir animal koi aur janwar bhi ho sakta hai na a have hurt h yes you know but let's let's assume that we are speaking from the context of um human sector so it's you no know, a have had h and is the number of page in the book b so the relationship is going to be natural numbers to book mm -hmm. set of natural numbers natural number to to set of books actually theek hai here you can't have a half page or one third page so, it, so the page, number of pages is always a relationship uh, natural numbers actually okay anyway so when whenever we have to say so i hope you 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 saw that you can specify any relationship that you have you know that you observe around you that the quantities are related with you know um 
um, you know, with each other. I can I can say, for example, I can say, for example, P is population. Okay, of uh, Sakhar at time t. Time t. So this is like relating the set of population with time actually. Okay. So what what would be the um, what would be the uh, the domain of or what would be the you know it, it's going to be a relationship from where to where. Population mean set of natural mm -hmm. numbers, right? Time t. Sir, time is domain. Time domain, yeah, but time is a set of positive real numbers. In other words, that t must be greater than or equal to zero. It's just some time actually. It's some time. Anyway, so I said that you can take any two quantities which are related with each other in some way and you know, you have, you can have the relationship actually. Okay. Now, when I say that H, you know, A is a father of B is a relationship from A to B. I can also represent this as the cross product. Okay. So the, I can say that I have H cross H actually. So H cross H may be interpreted as that it's a relationship from humans to humans actually, okay? So this is, this relationship is going to be from C cross C. So the cross product may be interpreted as that being neighbor is a relationship from, you know, country to country, okay? Being reciprocal is a relationship from R cross R, okay? A likes the game B is going to be a relationship from H cross G humans to games. Okay. P is the recipro P, P the price of a book is a relationship from uh, you know set of rational numbers into set of books actually. All right. A is a subset of B is a is a, is a relationship from the power set to the power set. Right. H likes B is a relationship from humans into humans actually. You know, so X less than Y is a relationship from real numbers to real numbers, right? And uh, A is a hurt of H is a relationship from hurt to organ, uh, humans to organ. Number of pages in a book is a relationship from the natural numbers to the books, okay? And, uh, you know, population at the time T of Sakhar is the relationship from natural numbers to what do you call R plus, right? So when I am saying, when I am saying that, you know, I have a relationship from, you know, one kind of quantities to another kind of quantities I can write this as a cross product. So cross product is kind of a representative of a relationship, okay? So mathematically, I'm gonna say that if Ahmed, okay, is father of, okay, is father of uh, Nasser, okay? So if I have to say, I, you know, I can say Ahmed is the father of Nasser, but I can also say that Ahmed, so mathematically I can say Ahmed, so ordered pair Ahmed and Nasir belongs to, you know, this uh, relationship, which relationship? So let me, let me give you an example. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me write, you know, it a bit more precisely. All right. By the way, if I am saying that I have a relationship, let's give it a name R and R, then this R must be a subset 
it must be included in what do you call some set a cross b so i'm going to say r is a relation some kind of a relation that could be being father being neighbor being reciprocal liking the game price of the book whatever theek hai and a and b can be anything h and h c r c r r r whatever okay so r is a relationship from a to b now in a cross b you know what are the elements in a cross b so the a cross b you have added pairs actually so whenever i have to say that x is related with y by relation r okay so x is related with y by relation r i'm going to write it mathematically so my mathematical way of saying that is going to be that x comma y belongs to r right x comma y belongs to r so when i'm saying that x you know is related with a relationship r i'm going to say that x comma y belongs to r so whenever now you see an ordered pair you have to you have to basically you know understand in your head you have to interpret it in such a way that yes this x and y must be in some relationship actually and this relationship must have some description actually okay so for example i'm saying f is a relationship of being father all right and say f contains these things so i say that a um ahmed and nasir okay and uh, say joseph and jacob okay and um i'm going to say i don't know so you can you can have you can have several you know uh, kind of a relationship actually uh, joseph jacob and say i don't know um you know say c and d whatever okay so there can be several things so now this is a relationship so when i am saying that ahmed and nasir ahmed and nasir ahmed and nasir belong to f what do i mean what is the meaning of it the meaning of it is that ahmed okay ahmed is a father of y uh, ahmed is the father of nasir actually okay so one way is to write this sentence and say that ahmed is a father of y and the other way is to write this mathematically that the ordered pair ahmed and nasir belongs to the relationship f in other words ahmed and nasir are in this relationship of f actually that ahmed is the father of y by the way can i say that nasir comma ahmed belongs to f can i say this keeping in view this description of f no sir no sir we can't no, say sir. because no. what what would be the meaning of this actually the meaning of this this would be that nasir is a father of ahmed and that's not true that's not true nasir is not father of ahmed ahmed is the father of nasir actually are you getting the point all right sometimes you know reverse is true and and um, most of the times reverse is not true actually so for example let, let's take another game uh, and another, uh, another um, uh, set that you have uh, set set h actually so in h you have for example i don't know you have ahmed okay you have nasir and you have habib okay and you have i don't know nasir okay so on and so forth and there are some games actually okay so what are your favorite games okay so maybe someone like cricket someone like say soccer 
So I like, I don't know, um, soccer and uh, what? Football, hockey. Hockey. Football, the whole game is soccer. And, okay, maybe someone like, you know, snake game on their mobile. <laughs> okay. So, you know. You know, you can have a variety of things. So this is set of humans and this is set of games, for example. And I'm saying that I have this X likes Y game. So for example, this the relationship R here is that Ahmed soccer. And I have to say that Habib likes hockey, Nasir like snake game, okay, and uh, I don't know, Nasser likes also say uh, hockey, so on and so forth. So this is a relationship, okay? This is a relationship, but this relation in this relationship, each ordered pair has a meaning. You have to keep this very important thing that each ordered pair has a meaning, all right? Can I say that, you know, Nasser likes uh, soccer? Can I say Nasser likes soccer? Yes, sir. It's a yes, relationship. No, relationship hai, magar keeping in view this description, keep in, keep in view, it. no, it doesn't mean, it doesn't, it, 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 this is not true. Take care. This is not true that does you know does it does not like so soccer, soccer actually it's, you know it's not mentioned here are you getting the point so yes, so sir. this this is what is the meaning of a relationship so so you have to keep in view so, so and, and and you see how beautiful it is a way to to use some mathematical abstract mathematical notions to to interpret and put the and give them meaning in you know in, in, in some real world context actually okay so you can take any you know um, um uh, what do you call relationship between two objects and you can put it kind of this cross product form actually are you getting the point you can put it from the cross product form okay and uh, so whenever you see next time cross product okay do you have any question here any question sir niche usme sir example mein de de yes sir hum isko agar is tarah likh sakte hain ke ahmad ka mas soccer belongs to h cross g s cross h cross g mein likh sakte hain theek hai we can we can say that okay so in other words he you know the h cross g contains all possibilities h cross g contains all possibilities all possibilities all possibilities but out of all these possibilities what are the real choices so that's the relationship you know yes. i can i can have you know i can possibly like all games but in reality i would like some games actually not all obviously so that you so so therefore we say that a relationship a relationship you know is a subset of a cross b it could be equal to entire a cross b you know like a cross b itself is a relationship all right but r can also be a subset of a cross b maybe i'm not interested in all you know relationships i'm just interested in you know some part of it actually theek hai samajh aa rahi hai baat so h cross g is indeed a relationship theek hai that's one relationship um so so for example if you want to say that h is a father of h or say a is a, a, a neighbor of b or x is a reciprocal of y so 
so can i say so so for example if i treat this relationship as r cross r entire r cross r then i know that 1 and 2 belongs to r cross r but would that be true as per this relationship would that be true can i say that 1 is a reciprocal of 2 वेल you're going to have 3 and 1/3 and so on and so forth so this is really the the relationship not entire r cross r is a relationship i can't say 2 is a reciprocal of uh you know 3 actually okay so 2 comma 3 does not belongs to this r theek hai it belongs to r cross r in r cross r se hoga but but i want i want this relationship to have meaning yani main ye to keh sakta hu ki this relationship r is a relationship from real numbers to real numbers it's like relating the two real numbers but not all real numbers are related with each other in this relationship sare real numbers is relationship mein you know uh, uh, related nahi hai but obviously this is a relationship from r cross r so you have to you have so to then see. subset ke sakta subset hai yes r is a subset yes this r is a this r is a subset of r cross r so to in mein se koi ek matlab r ke jo elements hai 1 comma 1 is subset of r cross r bhi to keh sakte hain agar ye bhi keh sakte hain ye bhi keh sakte hain but yahan par koi restriction to nahi hai na we don't have a restriction here we are saying that x is a reciprocal of y where x is a real number and y is a real number ठीक है, so in this relationship you not you are not going to have only one one, you should have two and one half, you should have one half and two, you should have three and one yes. third, ठीक है, तो ये सब आने चाहिए ना इस relationship में, all those which are the reciprocal okay. of each other they all should come in this relationship actually, ठीक है? Okay. Good. ठीक है sir. So 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 on, next time. whenever you see the cross product okay whenever you see the cross product you have to assume you have to you know say or you have to think that aha maybe this is a relationship from set a to set b now set a can be anything set b can be anything you know a cross b itself is a relationship and if you take a subset of a cross b this is also going to be a, a relationship actually and this relationship has a has a meaning actually okay so the, it it should have some hidden meaning and when i am saying that x comma y belongs to r okay uh, i'm going to say that x is related with y okay with some relationship i don't know what relationship is this but there must be some relationship through which x is related with y samajh aa rahi hai baat so so see so see that's that's that, that's why we say that mathematics is a language actually you can take your real world things and you can put it into abstract mathematical setting okay so these cross products and the ordered pairs they looks like meaningless things actually to you you might have learnt it previously and you know you must be saying that okay you know you know there is nothing interesting about these sets but you can see that how these abstract things like cross product and their subsets and their ordered pairs can represent the real things actually <laughs> okay <clears throat> okay sir now i am i am interested in a special kind of a relationship okay i'm at the moment in this chapter i'm not relationship 
<clears throat> with all relations, you know, a kind of relationship, but I'm related with some special kind of relationship. And let me take, for example, a particular um, 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 a relationship. I, I, let's say I say that X is the price of book Y. Okay, X is the price of book Y. Then I know that X is going to belong to say a natural number or maybe a rational number, it doesn't matter. And Y is going to be an element in the set of the books. Okay. And if I give this price a name, okay, or maybe if I'll be more specific, let me take some prices and subjects. Let me take some prices and subject. By the way, um, when you go to the bookstore to buy a book, you say that I need this book. So then the, the bookseller tells you the price. So every book has a price actually. So I can treat this relationship. Let's call this relationship P. So it's a price relationship. It's a relationship of books to their prices actually. So I'm saying that it's a relationship. I can go N cross B as well, but the more natural way to say would be that, okay, take some book and you know take some price actually. Are you getting the point? Let me take specifically some books, okay, some books. So let me take say maths and physics and bio and economics, okay, and uh, I don't know, um, you know, uh, chemistry, something like that, okay. And say, um, so I have some prices, okay, so I have some set prices, set of, or set of the prices, I don't know, what should I give it name? So let's give give those that set of prices names X actually, okay, and let's take say take say a hundred and two hundred and say three hundred and two fifty and three fifty and so on and so forth, okay. Now, what kind of a relationship this is going to be. What is an essential, what are the essential properties that you think are the natural properties that this relationship P should have from books to their prices actually? So what do you think that? Just ponder actually that what relationships like this price relationship should have, what are the key characteristics that it must have actually? any clue. So just don't think mathematically, think naturally first. Then think, well, we're going to think it mathematically. So what are the key thing that, yes? This book may pay this data on the price is this data order. By the way, this is like bringing, um, okay, that's one way, that's one way that, okay, you know, this page may so the, the book that contains more pages is going to have more price actually. Okay, that's that's one way to say, but but I am saying that if you want to relate these two things, then what should be the basic properties between the relationship of the books and the prices actually? Sir, every book has a different uh, price. This is very good. This is very, very good. This is this is excellent actually. Every book have not a different necessarily a price. Every book must have a price actually. So there is nothing free. Okay. 
even if if the government is giving you some books the government must be paying for that book those books so nothing is free on the bookstore so every book must have some price not different price can you can you agree with me that it is not necessary that every book must have a different price so you can have the two books with the same price theek hai okay sir okay what else what else every book must have a price and sir if two books are same then their price will be same sir if um, the two books are same then their price would be same um i mean if two books are the you know same books then that's one book actually <laughs> the same book every book must have a price so let me let me add one thing so do you think that i i sir, must say jay 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 sir lekin aisa hum keh sakte hai na ke book to same hi hai lekin ek ki first copy hai aur dusre ki second copy hai to to price mein fark hoga lekin aap aap jo hai so you are bringing the editions and so on and so forth so don't bring this information i'm just saying i have some books and i have prices actually okay so so the first thing is that so, so there is no need to bring additions and so on imagine that all books have the same addition okay anyway so every book must have a price and every book must have only one price actually only one price So what do you mean by that? When you go to the bookstore and you say that give me mathematics book, and the bookseller tells you that okay, the the price of the mathematics book is one hundred rupees and one fifty rupees, or one hundred rupees or two hundred rupees actually. So you're gonna say that's nonsense, okay? If if you have one book, you you are giving me one book in my hand. why you are quoting two prices actually so there must be one price actually so every book must have a price and every book must have only one price actually so do you agree with me yes sir okay. yes sir now let me write a relationship and see that a given relationship satisfy this condition or not so that's a sensible relation Do you agree that this is a very sensible relation that yes every book have a price and every book have only one price actually so it's a reasonable relationship so let me let me give you you know say maths has price 100 okay and say physics has price 102 say biology is colorful book so it has say higher price say 350 okay e has a, a price of say economics as 200 price and c has say price i don't know uh 300 actually okay uh so does this relationship satisfies the both conditions yes sir it does satisfy the both conditions every book has a price maths has a price physics has a price biology has a price economics has a price and c has a price and every book has a unique price so math has only one price 100 the physics has only one price 100 the book uh, the biology has only one price 350 the e uh, the, the economics has only one price 200 okay the the chemistry has only one price that is 300 actually Are you getting the point? Okay. समझ आ रही है बात? So let me give you now, for example, a book, uh, a, a relationship. Say M, hundred, physics, hundred. Say B, hundred. Say E, hundred. by the way is this a relationship is is this a is this relationship satisfies the both conditions 
Yes, sir. It does satisfy the both condition. Anyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. अच्छा जी, दोनों conditions हैं. No, sir. Chemistry नहीं है रहा. Yes, so there is a book. There is a book that does not have a same. Uh, that does not have a buy, uh, price actually. So, so, so. According to this relationship, this condition must be satisfied. So every book must have a price actor, right? So in this relationship, chemistry does not have a price. ठीक है? But chemistry say so. So this is not. It doesn't satisfy this first relationship. Okay, the first condition. So by the way, if I put say chemistry and one hundred. Then now is it um is it um is it is it is is it is it the, is it the relationship that satisfies the both condition this and this? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. This is very good. Every book has a price, and every book has only one price, right? So this may be like you know you have went to some sale and book store actually and. you know the book store has a sale that everything you know 100 rupees okay so wo aap jaate hai na kabhi kabhi you know you go to the you know uh you know this uh, clock tower it sakkar actually ghanta ghar jaate hain to udhar wo ready lagi hoti hai ji har maal 10 rupya hai <laughs> so 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 this is like this is like you know everything 100 rupees so maybe there is sale but it's a it's it's a function it's in it's not a fun, you know it's it's a it's a relationship actually it's a correct relationship that satisfies the both properties how about this one if i say that i have m 100 and uh, p 250 and e is also 100 and c is 300 and i say that p has um Uh, 200. Is this the relationship no. that satisfies both properties? No, sir. No, sir. Why? Sir, because P is a double. P is double. So, so there is a one book which has two prices. So that's nonsense. So how can one book have two prices actually? Okay. So that's one reason. It doesn't satisfy, you know, this condition. Any other thing that you that you observe in it? so it doesn't satisfy this condition any other thing first condition bhi satisfy nahi kar raha first bhi nahi kar raha because there is a book of uh, 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 biology which doesn't have a price actually yes sir. which doesn't have a price are you getting the point so now yes, now keeping in view this example i kind of uh, told you now i would like to put what you call a bit of abstract definition actually okay and uh, this will become a one particular example of that abstract definition so i'm going to say that imagine i have a relationship and the relationship is between two quantities say a and b okay and r is a relationship from a to b where a has some objects in it could be real numbers could be books could be humans could be anything and b is all has also some objects actually okay which which have that okay in which you can have objects in which you can have humans and books and whatever i'm going to say that this relationship satisfies you know such two properties like these two properties analog of these two properties if so r is a subset of b a cross b that satisfies satisfies following number 1 every for every a in a so if you pick an element every element from a there is a b in b such that 
A is in relationship with B with relationship R. Okay. So does does is it is it analog of this first condition? As as I was saying that every book has a price. Okay, so every book is in relationship with some price actually. So here I'm saying that every A has, for every A there is a B in B such that A and B are in relationship R. And secondly, for every A, so I want to say that uh, th th there is only one, okay? So I would say that um, for every A, A in A, there is, there is a unique B in B such that, such that a is in relationship with B with this relationship R. So for every A, there is a B. I mean, if, if, you, if you see carefully, the second condition also includes the first condition actually. Because what we are saying is that for every A, there is a B, but this B is unique actually. Okay? Such that A comma B is an R. And what do you mean by unique that, you know, if I, if I say it mathematically, if I say it mathematically, imagine A is in relationship with B in R, and imagine A is also in relationship with, okay, let me, let me say it. Um, let me say it. Let me say it this way that, okay, A is in relationship with B and A is also in relationship with B in relationship R. Then B and C are same. Would that be a correct way to say that every A is a relationship, is in relationship with B, a, a unique B? Would that be, is this, does, does this description give you the, the meaning of uniqueness? Yes, sir. Because yes, it, sir. Say, it says that if A is in relationship with B and A is also in relationship with B, then B and C can't be different actually. Now, if you have a relationship that satisfies these two properties, okay, I'm going to say, that such a relationship R is a function. That's a function from A from A to B. That's that's really the definition of a function. So function is what? Okay. So so your function, the function that you use all the time in calculus. So, so your function is a relationship, okay, in which every element in A is related with some element in B, okay? And then that some element is also unique actually, okay? So therefore, sometimes you also say, sometimes you also say, you also put it at, by the way, sometimes you use this relationship, okay? So sometimes you also use this. Uh, whenever, whenever I have to say that f is a function from a to b, a to b, that is, you know, what I'm saying that f is a subset of a cross b okay such that it satisfies one and two such that it satisfies one and 
two properties that I have mentioned. That is, every for every A, there is a B, okay, such that A is related with B. And for every element A in A, there is a unique element B in B, such that A is related with B, okay? So, so here I can also say that when I, whenever I'm gonna say, so here's a notation actually, is an important notation that I must mention. So, so, so you see, it's all, this is all, all just formalization of very natural kind of ideas. So whenever I have to say that A and B are in relationship with F, where F is some function that satisfies the condition one and two that I mentioned above, then I will denote it, it by F of A equal to B. So this is just a symbol. Okay, so f of a equal to b is a symbol, all right? And this symbol means what? This means this, that the a is, uh, is, uh, a is in relationship with, what do you call, b through the relationship f, where f is a relationship from a to b, and it's kind of a relationship that satisfies the condition one and are you getting the point? So that's what that we usually write y equal to f of x. So, so mathematically we say that x is related with y with the function f. Okay. And this function, so you have to keep in view, function mathematically is a set. And it's a subset of a cross, what do you call b. Are you getting the point? So th there is also a name for the set A. What is the name for the set A? What do you call it for a given function? Domain. So you call it a domain. So domain is the set A in which you are relating. So A is A could be, for example, in being father relationship, the domain was human. In being you know, X less than Y, the domain was uh, real numbers. In this example, the domain was books actually. So domain is the set in which you relate, you have the potential quantities, the objects that you want to relate with some other quantities. And how about B? B is what? French. That's not French. Right. No, 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 that's not right. This is co-domain. Co -domain, yes. co so this is, this is called co-domain actually. There's a, diff there's a little difference between domain and co-domain actually. Are you getting the point? So F is a relationship. A function is a relationship from domain to co-domain in such a way that every element in the domain is related with a unique element in co-domain. That's what the function is actually, okay? That's what the function is. For example, let me tell you, let me write it formally. Let me write it formally. So here's a definition. This is what the definition that you quite often hear, okay? By the way, whenever I have to say that F is a function, F is a function from A to, B, okay, I'm gonna use this notation. So this is my way to say that F is a function from A to B. So I'm not gonna write this entire statement again and again, I'm gonna say that F is a function from A to B. But you have to, you know, assume that, you know, that F is basically a relationship from A to B that satisfies the condition one and two, okay? So a function <laughs> f from a to b is a function 
if for every a in a there is only one in other words unique b in b such that <clears throat> b equal to f of a so that's really is a that's really is a, <clears throat> a a cryptic way to say that a given relationship is a function actually okay theek <clears> hai <throat> so when i'm whenever i'm writing it whenever i'm writing it let me let me say it again theek hai whenever i'm saying that f is a function from a to b what do we mean by precisely precisely f is a subset of a cross b and this subset is a function okay if it satisfies two conditions satisfies two condition number 1 for every a in a is another way to say it. there is a b in b such that a comma b belongs to f okay so this is what is the meaning of saying that for every a there is a b in b such that b equal to f of a and what is the second thing that it must be unique in other words if a is related with b and a is related with c then b must be equal to c in other words that for every a if it is related with some b then this b must be unique actually you can't have two outputs okay for a same input actor are you getting the point so this is this is one way to describe thing and this is the another way to describe thing this is more precise actually <clears throat> okay this is more precise powerful this is something that you should that a mathematician should know very well okay and like this description is to de to describe for um, what do you call for the layman actually okay for the layman samajh aa rahi hai baat are you getting everything yes sir yes sir okay a function is a subset so let me take you for example let's 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 write some example so let's write some example <clears throat> so say i have in the set a i have um, say ahmed and nasir and um nasim something like that and the set b contains um what it contains it contains what hello sir assalam alaikum sir welcome sir sir main class mein aaya bas main free tha to bata ke basically main sate mein jaa le hua hu yes theek hai no worries man hello theek hai ji so so b is set in which you have imagine arnav um <coughs> Hashim and Rais and Sakeda. Okay, and I say that I have an F, which 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 is a relationship which says that that X is a father of Y. Okay, and. and i have this relationship say the ahmed 
is uh, the father of say Hashem yeah. and Nasir is father of Thaqib and uh, um, Nasir not Nasir Nasim say is father of I don't know Rais so on and so forth is this function is a function. Is this relationship is a function? Hmm? Yes, sir. Can I say that every, you know, every father, every element in set has a son, okay, and that son is unique. At, okay. By the way, being father. So the son is not necessarily a unique actually relationship. You know, you can have, I mean, in, in natural sense, if I say that N is also a father of rice, that would not be something impossible thing actually. Maybe the Nasser has two sons. Take it, Rais and uh, Hashem actually. But with this definition, you have to, you have to just care for it actually. Okay. How about if I write F as uh, Ahmad and Hashem and uh, Ahmad and uh, say uh, Rais, okay, and Nasir and say Saqib, so on and so forth. Is this a relationship? Is, is this relationship a function? No, sir. No, sir. Definition: This is not really a really a function actually. Why this is not a function? Because <clears throat> you know, Ahmed has two sons, okay, which is not allowed in in being function. Maybe you live in China, you know, in China there is one child policy, okay, that you can't have more than one child. <clears throat> and uh, and what is the other thing? What what is the other trouble that you have? The other trouble that you have is that. H is not equal to R. H is not equal to R. That's one actually. Okay, one trouble. But there is another trouble actually. Sir, Nasim has no son. Yes, son Nasim Nasim has... First Nasim. condition. First Nasim. condition for Nasim. every early one. Nasim does not have a son. Actually. Nasim does not have a son. Take it. So another. Uh, so, so this is not a function. This is not a function. So see, I'm, I'm really taking my time to make yourself comfortable with with this definition and this is important actually this is really important to, to internalize this definition to see that why this definition the way it is actually this seem like i mean if you show this definition to to someone you know who is who is who is who is not a mathematician so he's going to he's going to be afraid of this actually then i don't know what does what does the, all these symbol means but you see that all these symbols have a beautiful meaning behind them actually. This is all these symbolic representations. Anyway, another way to put, you know, this classical way to put the, to write the functions. Okay, so rather than writing the ordered pairs, I can also say that, okay, in this set I have A, in this set I have B, and here I have, you know, Ahmed and Nasir and Nasim. And here I have a Hashim and Saqib and Rais. Okay. So when I'm saying that, you know, Ahmed is a father of Hashim, uh, you know, I can represent this by this actually. So in a father relationship, in a father relationship, Ahmed is a father of Hashim. Nasir is a father of Saqib actually. And Nasim is a father of Rice. Okay, so this picture and this description, they are this one and the same thing actually. They are one and the same thing. Okay? So Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. I can also sir? write this. Whenever whenever I'm writing that okay, A is mapped onto H. Okay. Yeah, A is an added pair, A comma H belongs to F. 
Well, I can say that A added pair A comma H belongs to F one way, or A is mapped onto H under the relationship F, or A uh, is a father of H. All these things are saying the precisely same thing. Okay, they are saying this precisely the same thing actually. By the way, whenever I am saying that A is mapped onto H, okay, maybe write, I must write it here. Whenever I say that A arrow H, I'm gonna read it as, then how you have to read it as, that F and with F, then I'm gonna say F maps so this is map A to H, okay? So the relationship F maps A to H, the relationship F maps N to S, the relationship F maps Naseem to Rais actually. Samajariya baat? So someone was asking some question. Anyone? Sir, sir. Jiji. Second question, example, pe, A comma H and A comma R. This is the same thing that one is the same thing. Absolutely, absolutely. As I said that, KD, you know, sometimes many to one relationship makes sense. But function is really that it, it's really one to one relation. What, it could be one to many, uh, it could be many to one relationship. That, okay, you know, you, you can have that, okay, the physics has the price 100 and, you know, biology has a price 100. So the multiple books can have the same price. But for one book, you can't have two prices actually. Okay, so as per the definition of the function, this second, you know, uh, uh, definition does not make sense actually. It does not follow the definition of a function. It's a relationship, but not a function. <clears throat> Another thing, here's a, here's a notation actually. Another notation. So whenever I'm saying that A is mapped onto H under relationship F, I can also write as that F of Ahmed is Hashim, right? With notation. By the way, this Ahmed, I can call it, so some people like to call it input. So this is an input in the relationship F and H is what? This is really the output actually. Output. Are you getting the point? Another technical way to say this is that whenever I have that A is uh, related with H by F, I'm going to say mathematically that H is image of A under H, right? So what is the relationship of H? Um, H is the image, nee, under F actually, sorry. Under F. So H is an image of A, Ahmad, under F. And A is the pre-image of H under F actually. Okay. So if, if I'm saying that A is related with H, then H is the image of A and A is the pre-image of H actually. So for example, in, in, in this, in this um, relationship, in this description, what would be image and what would be the pre-image? In this description, 
sir a is pre image and b is image so so a is pre image of what you should say a is a pre image b, of b a is and, pre image of b sir. and b, b is, is the image, image of, of a okay in this relationship in this relationship this relationship what is the pre image of rice what is the pre image of rice nasim is the pre image of rice and what is the image of uh, nasir that is sir s wala kaun sa tha s wala tha sakib okay so uh, nasim uh, the image of the nasim is sakib actually all right समझ आ रही है बात ओके सो 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 आई होप यू हैव अंडरस्टूड अ बिट ऑफ डेफिनेशन एक्चुअली राइट नाउ यस सर चलिए सो लेट्स लेट्स नाउ मूव अम लेट्स नाउ मूव टू द केस टू डिस्क्राइब दैट इज अ फंक्शन वेल डिफाइंड so imagine some function is given to you well defined function imagine a relationship is given to you imagine you have been given an f from a to b by some formula that okay every b is related with a in in this formula ठीक है एंड आई वांट टू आस्क इज दिस फंक्शन वेल डिफाइंड व्हाट डू आई मीन बाय दैट दैट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस इज इज इट रियली अ फंक्शन इज इट रियली अ फंक्शन or yes, does does f satisfies the conditions of being function theek hai so you have to keep in view if i give you a formula then you have to check actually that you don't have to just believe that okay everything that is you know Uh, written in this form is going to be a function you have to verify that this function this this relationship that has been defined for you is is a function actually so if it is a function it if this relationship that has been given to you satisfies the condition of being function you're going to say it's a it's really a function actually okay or the function is well defined actually so in order to prove function well defined for example let me give you an example actually imagine i have a relationship from um, z set of integers to say positive integers actually okay and i give you a formula f of x equal to negative x square if this is a function no sir why not no sir why not sir because if you take for example one oh. from the domain and you compute say f of 1 which is uh, f of 1 which is going to be minus 1 this f of 1 does not belongs to z plus okay does not belongs to z plus in other words in z plus there is no number which can be the pre image of uh, image of 1 actually under f okay the formula that you have it does not belong so it, it does not satisfies the condition actually so if i want to make it into a function what should i do if i want to turn this into a function 
So I have two choices. So either make it Z, get rid of this. Um, get rid of this. Now, would that be a function? Yes. Sir. You know, now potentially maybe it has a fun. It, yes, it, has, it has that properties of being function actually. Chicken. All right. So let me give you a precise way to check that whether a given function is indeed a function actually, or a function is well defined. So to check, to check given relationship is a relation or function is well defined, you have to check the two conditions. Verify a following. which is basically the definition of function. Number one, show, so imagine, imagine the function is, for, is f from a to b in which the set a is mapped onto set b, okay? So for every a in a, the formula that you have been given f of a. So, you know, obviously if f is a, you know, function from A to B, then there must be some formula expression, some meaning that you, you that you would be given actually. For every A, make sure that F of A, whatever your F of A is, it belongs to B. It belongs to B. Okay. So in other words, I am throwing an element from A to B, then it's like make sure that it is really going into the B. For example, in my previous example, when I had Z minus here, this F of one does not belongs to, what do you call, uh, Z plus here, it does not belongs to Z plus, right? So I have a formula, F of X equal to minus X squared, but there is, um, what do you call, um, one for which this is not true. Take it. Secondly, that for, so, 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 so in other words, this definition is this verific, this part is telling you for every A, you must have an output and that output must belong to B. And the second condition should be that it must be unique actually. Now, how should I say that, that, you know, that it should be, the outputs should be unique. So how should I say, what, what do you think? How should I say that the outputs are unique? So I have, I have this condition. So here's the thing. So if A and B a is related with B and A is related with B prime under F. That is, if I say that F of B is equal to A and equal to F of B prime, that is F of B is equal to F of B prime, then it must imply, no. So here's the thing. I must say that if f of a is different from f of b, first karne, you have two outputs which are different from, you know, f of a is different from f of b. Then a must be different of, okay? So if you have two distinct outputs, 
all right then they should have two distinct input such okay the two distinct outputs must have two distinct inputs so you can't have the case that you know you have the same object but it is giving you two distinct outputs theek hai yani ek output ek input aapko do output nahi de sakta one input cannot give you what do you call or should not give you two outputs actually okay so so this is the second condition that we must verify but this second condition is in negative form so if i write this condition in a contrapositive form so what would be the contrapositive of this the contrapositive of this is going to be that if a is equal to b then f of a must be equal to f of b all right so this first condition is a way to verify the existence of output this first condition is saying that there must be an output and the second condition is saying that the output must be unique actually okay in other words if you have to verify that a given function is indeed a function then verify these two conditions verify these two conditions so if these two conditions are satisfied then i'm going to say that your f is well defined well defined and it's indeed a function if one of these conditions will fail i'm going to say function is not well defined actually okay so function ka well defined proof karna in order to prove the function well defined you have to prove these two conditions by the way <clears throat> if a function is ill defined so let me say if f is ill defined in other words it's not well defined then what could be the potential conditions like these two condition one and two must be satisfied so if a function is ill defined what could be the conditions how can i say that a function is not really a function it's badly defined function actually then at least one of these conditions must fail and what is the meaning of these two condition fail so it, in other words the negation of this condition or this condition is true so what would be the negation of this condition the first condition पहली कंडीशन की निगेशन क्या होगी सबसे पहले तो ये दिस इज अवर्सल कंडीशन दिस इज अवर्सल कंडीशन दैट फॉर ऑल ए एफ ऑफ ए बिलोंग्स टू बी सो निगेशन शुड बी देर एग्जिस्ट ए बिलोंग्स टू एक्टली there exist a in a such that f of, f of a, a does not belong does to not b. belongs to b can you find an a in a for which f of a does not belongs to b the function is ill defined for example in this example i'm ca i can say that this function is ill defined because i have one in z for which f of 1 does not belongs to the what do you call this is z plus act okay so if if first condition is not satisfied you know your function is ill defined or okay you can have a situation where the first condition is satisfied but the second condition is not satisfied so what would be the negation of the second condition <clears throat> the negation so this is an if then statement if then a statement so you have you have to show a equals if to b a equals to b and f of a f of a 
does not, not equal to, to f, f of b. So what do you mean by that? You have a single element which has two different outputs actually. If any one of these two conditions is satisfied, I'm gonna say my function is ill-defined. If both conditions are true, then my function is well-defined actually. Are you getting the point? So let me let me do some examples. Let me do some of that. So this is important actually. These things are very, very important uh, to, to, do, to do in mathematics. Functions are really the heart of mathematics actually. Okay, function is a way to relate one kind of objects with another kind of objects. Okay, so it's really the heart of mathematics. Okay, so let's do some examples in which some functions are well defined and maybe some are ill defined. Okay. Okay, so here's, here is one example. Here is one example. It's an example from book. So it says that, imagine I have been given a function. So someone has defined this for me that f of x equal to y for x, the output is y, if and only if y square is equal to x. In other words, every x is related with y. But what is the relationship between y and x? y square is x. Question, is this a function? Is this a function? Can I say it's a function? So if I write it in a set theoretic way, so I'm gonna say that F is a collection of ordered pairs X and Y, okay? From where to where? From R to R. In fact, this R is going to be R plus actually. In other words, it's going to, be, it's going to be a set of positive real numbers because a square of something cannot be negative such that y square equal to x. So can I say this is a function? Can I say this is a function? So here is the thing. By the way, does 4, 2 belongs to this F? Does 4, 2 belongs to this F? <clears throat> yes, sir. Yes, why? Because 2 square is equal to 4. Does 4, negative 2 belongs to this F? Yes, sir. I can verify it. Negative 2 square is also equal to 4. Now, you have the same input, you know, you have the same object which is related with two different, what do you call, outputs actually. So can I say this is a function? This is, this is not a function. Not a function. <clears throat> Okay. By the way, if I want to turn it into a function, what should I do? Can you tell me what should I do? Sir, positive real value. Yes. So one way could be this is a, this is a very good point that if just tweak a bit of definition. So let's take x and y where the x is from positive real numbers and say y is also from positive real numbers such that y square is equal to x. Now that's a function. 
So in other words, it satisfies the first condition. Okay. It really satisfies the first condition that now this will not be a trouble because in I can't take second component to be negative. So there is no, you know, it doesn't make sense to ask this question that does four comma negative two belongs to F or not. No, four comma negative two does not belongs to the F actually. Okay. How about if I how about if I want to check uniqueness? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take two components. So let's take x and y, and let's take x and y prime from f, right? And try to show that y is equal to y prime. So can I show it? So since x is related with y in this relationship. So what is the condition that it satisfies? y square is equal to x, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And what is, what is the meaning of x, y prime belongs to f? This means that x's are, are equal to y prime square actually. So can I deduce from this that y is equal to y prime? Yes, sir. Kya yes, what sir. should I do? Take a square root on both sides, okay? So, so if you take the square root on both sides, you're gonna get y equal to y prime. So we picked, two ordered pairs from F and we proved that Y equal to Y prime. So I'm hence I'm gonna say that my F is well defined. F is well defined. So it satisfies both conditions actually. Are you getting the point? While this function is ill-defined. So when a function is ill-defined, you know, sometimes it, it, it is possible to make it well-defined by making a little bit of changes. And sometimes it is not possible to make, you know, to make it well-defined actually. So here is another example. Here is another example. So imagine I have been given a function from Q to Q, TK. You have to keep one thing in head that whenever now I am saying that I have a function from a set to another set, you just don't have to keep it in your head like input and output. Okay. You have to keep the picture of the function or the definition of the function also in abstract setting. You are a mathematician. So the mathematician should go beyond input and output actually. Okay, so for a mathematician function is not a, you know, only, you know, a relationship of inputs and outputs, no. Okay, maybe engineers can say so, maybe some other people who are layman can say so, but for us, for us mathematician, function is a set. Okay, which is a subset of A cross B, in other words, domain and co-domain. And then, <coughs> you know, it satisfies two conditions. So we should keep that abstract definition also in our, in our head actually. So here's a, here's the thing actually. So I have been given a definition that, that F of M upon N is equal to M minus one upon N, okay? So I have been given a function f of m upon n equal to m minus one upon n. And I have been set to, to, to check that whether this given function is a function or not actually, okay? Obviously I'm gonna assume that n does not belongs to zero. And I want to say that is f well defined? In other words, is f a function? So the first condition I have to show 
that for every m upon n in Q, the f of m upon n that I have defined, it must also belongs to the Q. Okay. Is this condition true? If m upon n is from Q, is f of m upon n is also from Q? Anyone? I know f of yes, m upon n is equal to what? It's m minus one upon n. So if this, um, is, is, is this m upon n, you know, um, belongs to Q? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It does belongs to Q actually. So it satisfies the first condition. Now, let's um, have the other condition actually. What was the second condition to verify? Remember the criteria that if A equal to B, it must be that F of A is equal to F of B, right? Now, and for any AB, for all A and B from A. Now, in order to verify this condition, I need to do what? I need to pick two elements from the domain which are equal and I need to show that their you know, differences are also equal actually. So do you think this, this would be true? So let's take for example, M upon N, this is equal to P upon Q. Can I say that from this I can follow that f of m upon n is equal to f of p upon q that is m minus 1 upon n is equal to m uh, p minus 1 upon q. Can I say this would be true? <laughs> would that be true? Yes, sir. Anyone? Yes, sir. It can be true. Anyone yes, else? Sir, it can be true. Yes, sir. Paki baat hai. Yes, sir. True. Yes, sir. True. Ah, sir. Yar, dekho na. You know how it is possible. Now check actually. Let me let me first show you the reasons that why this is not necessarily true. Because think about it. This m minus n upon uh, m, m minus 1 upon n and ca can be written as m upon n minus 1 upon n and p minus 1 upon q is equal to p upon q minus 1 upon q. I know about these two numbers that they are equal to each other. Is it necessary that these two should also be equal? No. No, this is not necessary. This is not necessary. So for example, let's take a concrete example. Let's take a, so you have to be careful. Don't jump to the conclusions. Okay, let me take a concrete example. Let's take, I have two upon four and I have one upon two. Are they equal? Yes, they are equal, yes, right? Yes, sir. What would be f of 2 upon 4 by this definition? So it's going to be 1 upon 4. What would be f of 1 upon 2 by this definition? 2 over 4. 0. Yes, sir. It should be zero because you have to do what? You have to subtract one and divide by the same denominator. So it's going to be zero upon two, any zero. So is one upon four and zero equal? No. No, sir. So hence, this second condition is not satisfied. So this function. 
हमने कहा कि P of Q, P और Q और M और N equal है। M और N ऊपर हम कह रहे हैं आज देखें if if two ratios are equal, it doesn't mean that M is equal to Q and N equal N equal to P and N equal to Q। ये तो जरूरी नहीं है ना? If the two ratios are equal, जरूरी है कि M P के बराबर और N Q के बराबर हो। That's not necessarily true. So I have two over four. This is equal to one over two. So two is different from one, and four is different from two. But their ratio is same. And f of two over four, by definition, is two minus one over four, which is one over four. And f of one over two, by definition, is zero over two. So it must be equal to zero. All right. So this is not well defined. If you want to make it well defined, what you should do? क्या इसमें चेंज करें वॉट चेंजेस शुड आई डू इन द डेफिनेशन सो दैट यू नो यू हैव यू हैव दिस डेफिनेशन टू बी करेक्ट एक्चुअली क्या करें ऐसा कि ये ठीक हो जाए anyone the correction that you can make is that write m upon n in the lowest form theek hai write every m upon n in its lowest form actually where m and n become q co prime n m or n co prime ho jaye yani in ka jo so their uh, um, what do you call common this sh there should not be any common factor in both actually so if you can do that then probably your function is going to be well defined but in correct in its current form it's ill defined it's not well defined okay here is another example here is another example say you have a set q star and q star is q minus 0 so it's set of non zero rational numbers and i have a map f from q star to q star and you have to say that f of m over n is equal to n by 2m okay where m and m are integers but obviously they are non zero theek hai they are non zero theek hai is this function well defined first of all in order to check that this function is well defined we have to show what we have to show if m over n belongs to q star then is it the case that f of m over n also belongs to q star so would that be true the answer is yes yes why because f of m over n is going to be n over 2m where n is and uh, 2m is a non zero integer and both are integers so therefore it must be no sorry it it belongs to q star actually right what is the second condition that you have to verify the second condition that you have to verify is that if um m upon n is equal to p upon q then is it the case that f of m upon n equal to p upon q uh, f of p upon q that is is it the case that m upon 2n is equal to p upon 2q in other words if m upon n is equal to p upon q is it the case that m upon 2 2 
to n equal to p upon 2q. So if this is true, is this be true? The answer is yes, actually. Yes, yes. So, so take m upon n equal to p upon q and divide by 2. So if you take m upon n, p upon q, divide by 2q, uh, two, uh, divide by 2, you have this equality. Okay? So this is indeed a function, actually. This is indeed a, this is indeed a function. So in other words, whatever recipe is given to you, you have to verify that if this function, given function is a function actually, okay? So what we are going to do now, let's do an eight minute break actually. So it's 10.52. So now, can, can all of you back, are all of you back and can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure, let's, let's get back. So I hope now all of you understand the definition of the function. Okay. <laughs> and now let's talk about some of the more things related with the functions actually. Okay. So we have talked about <clears throat> a function. Um, so we define, we have defined the function from A to B, where the elements of A are mapped onto B. I know A is called the domain of the function and to B we gave the name codomain. Okay. But I would like to define <clears throat> the range of the function effect. Okay, so what do you mean by the range of the function? <clears throat> so the range of the function, let's use the notation F, is what? So range is the collection of the outputs, the collection of the images of all elements from the domain actually. <clears throat> so if f is a function from A to B, then range, we know that every element in domain is going to have some output. Okay, this is part of the definition. Then for, for every A, in A, whatever is the output, collect those all outputs into a set actually. And that set is going to be, what do you call? The range of the function actually, what class of the, the range of the function. Okay. <clears throat> so here is, here are some examples. Okay, here are some examples. For example, if you have, um, say, um, a picture I don't know, like that, so you have this set A and set B in which you have books of the biology, physics, math, economics, and you have some prices, 100, 150, 200, and so on and so forth, okay? So the B, say the biology book has a price 100, and say physics book has a price 200, and math book has say price 150, and say economics also has a price 200 actually, okay? So what would be the range of this function? So if this is a function f, or maybe if this is a price function p, then what could be the range of this price function p? The set of all uh, outputs actually. In other words, the price of 
the biology book and the price of the physics book and the price of the math book and the price of economics book. So collect all these prices. Now, what is the price of math book? It's 100. Biology book, it's 100. What is the price of the physics book? It's 200. What is the price of math book? It's 150. And what is the price of English uh, economics book? It's 200. But the 200 is already there, actually. So this is really, so there is no point of writing it again. So this is really is the range of, what do you call this? Price function, actually. Okay. So range is the collection of the images of the all elements from domain. This is important. Not of, range is not collection of, you know, I mean, if, if I write, for example, the price of biology and the price of mathematics and price of economics, this is not the range of F actually. Why this is not range? Because this does not contain the prices, the outputs of the all input section. Okay. So range, for example, for this function, P is going to be the collection of the all prices of the all book section. Okay. By the way, in this set, I can have also, so here is, so, so I can say here, the range of range of this price function is is what do you call the entire set B actually. So it's equal to the codomain. Okay. It's equal to the codomain. Here is another relationship. For example, I have a set A and set B. Okay. And the, the relationship that I have is less than relationship. So for example, I have a two, three here and five here and seven here. And here I have, uh, I don't know, four and six and nine. Okay, and six and nine. Then what is going to be the mapping according to this relationship? But this would not be a function actually. Can you see why this would not be a function? Anyone? Can you see why this three would, not be? would be exactly so three, three is less than four, six, nine. Exactly. So like three is less than four. More than one hour. Exactly. So three is less than six and three is less than nine. So this is not a function actually. Okay. So so this is not a correct uh, what do you call? Um a recipe of function. Okay, so let's write. <laughs> let's write something else. So let's write some, some something simple actually. I have say one, three, five here and A, B, C and D here. Okay, so one is related with B, three is mapped onto A, five is also mapped onto, for example, B actually. Now, what would be, say, this function is F. What would be the range of F? The range of F is going to be um, F of 1, F of 3, and F of R, uh, F of 5. Right? So, what would be the output? F of 1 is a f of uh, f of one is b f of th uh, three is uh, what are you gonna say a and f of five is also b so this is really the range actually right but in this case you can see the range is different from range is different from from B actually. It's different from codomain. 
in fact range is a proper subset of b okay it's it's not equal to it's a proper subset of b okay so in general range is going to be a subset of the codomain actually it could be equal to codomain but it also could be equal to what do you call uh, you know domain actually theek hai ji so that's that's one example samajh aa rahi hai baat thodi thodi si anyone yes sir if you have question you may ask so here is here is for example another interesting function whose range we can talk about that so imagine i have this function i have function i from a set a into the set a but the definition of the function is that i of x is equal to x actually for all x in a right <clears throat> so in other words whatever is the input the same number is the output actually so we call such function as the identity function identity function all right sometimes in identity function we put the set in the subscript actually we also write you know ia so ia is really the identity function on the set a so what is the role of the identity function you know it's a, it's a very useful thing we will see later on that there are several things that can be done in the terms of the identity function that whenever it is operated on to some x gives x actually so can someone tell me that what would be the range of the identity function so by definition range of the identity function is is the collection of output ji ji batai batai रेंज वही होगा ना तो जो so therefore the range of this identity function no matter what identity function you have is equal to the same function there is another interesting function so imagine i have a function f okay so imagine i have a a function f from a to b okay and f of a is equal to some c okay where c is a fixed constant in b okay so what does this definition is saying no matter what a you take from a the output is a same number c it's like you have the same like for example you have this example in which you have this you know biology physics and math but they all are mapped onto the same price actually so biology has a 100 price Uh, math has a hundred price and physics has a hundred price they all have the hundred price all right so hundred is like this c actually okay so f of a equal to c means that all inputs has a same output which is c actually what would be the range of such a function anyone this function ki range kya hogi c sir is going to be a singleton set actually so you're going to say 
लिखेंगे कैसे भाई रेंज ऑफ एफ इज एफ ऑफ ए सच दैट ए इज इन ए कैपिटल ए कैपिटल ए बट एफ ऑफ ए सी फॉर ऑल ए इन ए सो द आउटपुट इज गोइंग टू बी द सिंगल टन सेट सी एक्चुअली ओके द सिंगल टन सेट सी सो सो दिस इज रियली द रेंज ऑफ द कॉन्स्टेंट फंक्शन Okay. Uh, ha have you done domains and ranges in in your calculus course? A little bit. Yes, sir. Okay. So, so for example, if I yes. give you a function from R to R, R to R, okay. and i give you a function say f of x equal to x square minus x okay so can you tell me the range of the function sir same as sir yes sir all real all real all, all real numbers oh. yes sir yes sir thoda sa masla yes, hai sir thoda sa masla hai so here is the thing can you tell me an x that gives you 1 that is can you find an x for which x square minus x is equal to 1 can you find no, this so this equation does no, not sir. equal to 0 okay so yes. can, can can we can we solve this equation in 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 you know in real number the answer is no you can't so there is no x which gives you um, but there can be one x isko kar sakte hain solve agar karna chahe to what it would be so x equal to 1 plus minus square root of um, b square any yani 1 minus 4ac any yani plus 4 theek hai aur ha mm. huh? Minus four AC. Plus four divided by divided by divided by two, right? So you have a X. In fact, you have X. But the jaldi me apne kya diya ki nahi hai. One plus square root of uh, square root of five upon what do you call two? Okay, so you have plus minus, and both of these are real numbers actually. Okay. So f of there is an x actually. There are two x which gives you this. The interesting would be trouble the bota ke when I say that what is f of x equal to negative one actually? What is equal when when the f of x equal to negative one? Hmm. then you're going to have a trouble actually x square minus x plus 1 equal to 0 and then you're going to have x equal to uh 1 plus minus square root of 1 minus uh you're going to have 4 over square root of 2 in simple 2 so 1 plus minus square root of negative 3 upon 2 like okay this number does not belongs to r actually theek okay? hai so so there is no function okay so here is a, here is the thing for you verify verify why the range of the function is if this interval minus 1 over 4 to infinity my claim is that the range of function is this minus 1 over 4 to infinity okay so So you can have it. So majority of so 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 these domains and range you have also done in calculus. So I'm not spending too much time on it. Okay. So I want to move to the more of uh, the mathematical thing. The next thing that I would like to define if you do have questions, please ask. Is the equality of the functions. functions 
In other words, when two functions are equal, so when two functions are equal, hmm? so what do you think? I know about equality of numbers. I know about equality of sets, but how can I say that a function is equal to another function? So what would be the most natural way to say? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here's a theorem that answers that actually. <clears throat> I'm gonna say that I have two functions. So consider you have two functions. F is a function from A to B and G is another function from A to B. I'm gonna say that that the function f is equal to g if and only if f of x is equal to g of x for all x in the domain that is a actually. So two functions are equal if their outputs are equal. This is what the theorem that I would like to prove actually. Okay, so two functions are equal if and only if, um, you know, you know, to, you know, their outputs are equal actually. So, so equality of function means that their outputs should be equal. <clears throat> so how can I prove that two functions are equal? So keep in view that functions are sets actually. So function is a set subset of A cross B and G is also a subset of A cross B. So they both are sets actually. And suppose, suppose that the set F is equal to the set G. Okay, set F is equal to the set G and I want to prove this actually. So in other words, I want to first prove this side, that suppose f is equal to g and then deduce that y f of x equal to g of x, all right? Now, <clears throat> let me take an x and f of x. Now let me take an, okay, I can take x and f of x. I know that this ordered pair is going to belong to F. Do you agree with me that this ordered pair is going to belong to? Have I? Yes, sir. Do you yes, agree sir. with so X and F yes, of X sir. are in relationship with X? But this F is equal to G. This X is equal to what do you call G? So this means that this x f of x also belongs to g all right it also belongs yes, to g so if it also belongs to g what does it mean so this x g of uh, f of x must be equal to must be this x f of x equal to must be equal to some ordered pair. Because in G, you have the ordered pairs. By the way, what should be the first component of the ordered pair? G of X, sir. So it should be X. Because these ordered pairs has to be equal. So the first component could be X. But the second component, I have no idea what it would be. So let's call it Y. Let's call it Y actually, all right? And, uh, but this, uh, uh, okay, that is where 
where this x and y belongs to g. But if this x and y belongs to g, what does this mean? I can say that this y must be equal to some g of x. Okay. Like this ordered pair is equal okay. to some ordered pair in G. I have no idea what are going to be inside of it. But I have just this idea that this ordered pair must belong to G. So if this ordered pair belongs to G, what is the meaning of an ordered pair belonging to a function? It means that the second thing is the output of the first thing. So in other words, Y is equal to G of X. So if Y equal to G of X, I can rewrite this expression again as that x f of x is equal to x g of x. So if x f of x is same as x g of x, then I can deduce that f of x must be equal to g of x. So what did I show? I showed that if two functions are equal, then their outputs are equal actually. Okay. But I have to sir, put G G G G. Sir, here we have first component X Q we have all variable Q in X S is why we can't take So here's the thing. This why we can't take it. You know, I know that two ordered pairs are equal. Two ordered pairs are equal if and only if first component is equal to first component. And the second compo uh, yes, component is equal to the second component actually. Now I am saying that I have an x y, which is equal to some ordered pair. Mm -hmm. So the first component yes, should be equal to the first component, and the second component, component is equal to what? Second component. But yeah, but yeah, uh, what would be the second component? I have no idea. So therefore, I have written y. Okay. Therefore, I written y. And later on, I, I am deducing that this y must be g of x. So therefore, these two ordered pairs are equal. So f of x, their second component should also be equal. Okay. So what does this prove? Yes, that sir. if two functions are equal, then their outputs are also equal. But I have to prove also converse because this is an if and only if statement. This is an if and only if statement. So I have to prove this conversely as well. So how can I prove it conversely? I'm saying that suppose, suppose f of x is equal to g of x for all x in A. And we want to claim that the set f is equal to set g. Take it. Set f is equal to set g. So these two are sets actually, so I need to show that is I need to show that f is a subset of G and G is a subset of F. Actually. This is what that I would like to show. All right. So let's show this first part. Let's take an ordered pair A comma B from F. Okay, so this is an ordered pair. So if A comma B is from F, what does this mean? This means by definition that B must be F of A, right? B must be F of A. So if B must yes, be sir. F of A, and I have been given that F of X, obviously where A is from the set A, if B is F of A, and I know that all F of X are equal to G of X, so this means that this F of A must be equal to G of A. Okay, that is B is equal to G of A. And if B equal to G of A, what does this implies? This implies that A comma B belongs to, belongs to G actually, right? This is what the definition, this is what the definition of, of, of G actually. Okay, so this shows that F is a subset of B, but you can go converse also. You can take an AB from G, which is going to say that, okay, B is equal to G of A. 
but the g of a is equal to f of a, so therefore b must be equal to f of a. And if the b is f of a, then this means that a comma b belongs to f actually. Take it, so I'm not writing the proof again, I'm just mentioning it. So this shows that g is a subset of f. So therefore f must be equal to, what do you call it, g. So hence, this theorem is giving you a beautiful criteria to check that whether two functions are equal to each other or not. So you have to keep in view that f is equal to g. Beta, ye jo abhi hum kar rahe na, this is the part that we are doing now. We did sets, we did functions, and we will do in next class relations. This is really the most important part of this subject. Because what we are doing, we are applying our all of previously learned mathematical thinking here. And the functions and sets and relations are such a things which you have to encounter till your last breath if you are a mathematician. Okay, in all subjects, no matter what subjects you are doing. You're doing calculus or linear algebra or any subject you are doing, you have to encounter functions and sets and you know all this stuff actually okay you have to 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 see this okay is it making sense okay. challenge so you have to carefully yeah, yeah. so you you have to not only convince yourself that why these results are true but you have to keep all these results in your permanent memory Okay, so whenever you have to prove two functions are equal, just show that their, their outputs are equal actually. This is what really is the, the key thing. So let me give you an example of two equal functions. Is there a question? If not, fine. <clears throat> so here is, here is an example. Imagine I have been given an F from R to R and one function is F of X equal to X minus one square. And I have been given another G that is from R to R and the G of X is really X square minus two X plus one. My claim is F is equal to G. Okay. My claim is that F is equal to <clears throat> G. So what does this mean? This mean I need to show that F of X at every X is equal to G of X for all X in R. Okay. So if I take my F of X, what is F of X? X minus one is square. So I can simplify this guy so I know that this is going to be x square minus 2x plus 1. But this is equal to precisely g of x. So this means that every x, at every x, f of x is equal to g of x. But f evaluated at x is equal to g evaluated at x for all x in R. So majority of Yes, sir. Okay. For example, here is another interesting example in the book. So it says that imagine I have two functions, f and g, from R to R. And I have a function s of x. You know, s is a function from R to R as well. consider I have a function s that is from r to r and the output of the x is really I'm defining the output of f of x as the product of f of x times g of x and consider another function t from r to r that is defined as the t of x is equal to g of x times what do you call f of x so my claim 
is that s is equal to t okay so the function s is equal to <coughs> what do you call the function function t so how can i show it i need to show that is that s of x is equal to t of x for all x you have to justify this that why this is true and the way s of x kya hoga by definition is equal to f of x times g of x where what do i know about f of x f of x for every x f of x is a real number and for every x g of x is a real number so f of x is a real number and g of x is also a real number okay so in real numbers you have commutative law okay you have commutative law so you can say that this is same as g of x times f of x okay so we justified it by commutative law actually so the the justification comes from two things first of all f of x is a real number g of x is a real number and then by commutative law of real numbers g of x is equal to f of g of x times f of x and what is g of x times f of x this is equal to t of x so therefore you know x is from um this is true for all x so therefore s must be equal to t actually this seem like a simple thing but in an exercise you will find something interesting actually in which you have to prove that two functions are equal to each other right ठीक है तो बस होंगे एक्सरसाइजेस इन व्हिच यू हैव टू प्रूव द इक्वालिटी ऑफ टू फंक्शन सो इज 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 देयर एनीथिंग इन योर इज इज देयर एनी क्वेश्चन इन हियर एक्चुअली so you have to keep this recipe this is the recipe actually that no matter what kind of functions you have between any two sets the in order to prove the equality of the sets you have to prove that you know that uh, that what that the their outputs of the functions are true okay we proved the theorem that allows us to deal with it theek hai ji now i would like to quickly talk about some of um the types of the function okay do, do you guys know one one and r two functions Hmm? Do you guys know one one and non two function? Uh, we know oh, one, we one, know one two one function. So one two one function. Okay. okay, so you have you know the one two one function. Okay, so now we want to do the mathematics of it actually. One one function, or some people like to call it injection actually. या इंजेक्टिव फंक्शन सम पीपल लाइक टू कॉल इट वट यू कॉल द इंजेक्टिव फंक्शन इंजेक्शन और इंजेक्टिविटी वन वन दे ऑल आर द सेम थिंग एक्टिव सो हाउ यू हैव डिफाइंड द वन वन फंक्शन वेन द फंक्शन इज वन वन एक इनपुट के लिए तो एक आउटपुट डेफिनेशन से भी पता चलता है ये तो फंक्शन है ओके सो वी हैव वी हैव आर दीज वेग डेफिनेशन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल एवरी इनपुट हैज एवरी input has every uh, you know a unique output this is the part of the definition of the function so this is not one one but someone sir? said ji 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 sir but ke sakte na agar sir domain jo hai sir wo equal ho codomain ke domain equal ho codomain ke oh my god 
why why you need equality of the domain and co domain no 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 that's that's not the case actually so so someone said something interesting it says that distinct elements yes a distinct element in a may have to may have to distinct element in b very good distinct elements in a are mapped on the distinct elements in b okay i agree with it with b <clears throat> r to be more precise no two elements in co domain no two elements in co domain share a pre image theek hai this is this is going to be more you know what do you call uh, unvague statement so what do i mean by that that if you have a you know this uh, typical example is this actually that you have uh, i don't know a set a and set say b and you have this a b and c and 1 2 and 3 so you know every and maybe four actually as well so a is mapped on to 2 and b is mapped on to 1 and c is mapped on to 3 actually so we can see that it satisfies the both definitions when i'm saying that distinct elements in a are mapped on to distinct element in b ठीक है, distinct element in B. So if I take A and B, I know that they are mapped onto, you know, two and one actually. You take A and C, they are mapped differently. So all elements are mapped differently. ठीक है, all elements are mapped differently. Secondly, no two elements in co domain share a pre image. So what do you mean by that? every element in co domain or uh, uh, every mapped element in co domain have a distinct pre image so one has a pre image b two has a pre image a three has a pre image c so in the range there are no two elements which share what do you call the pre image actually okay that's what is really uh, the definition of something be one one but another important thing is that a one one function must be a function first actually it must be a function then we're going to check that it is one one or not actually okay so not every function is one one there are functions which are one one and there are functions which are not one one actually okay so for example if i put a d here and i map this d to 3 then i'm going to say that this function is not one one because 3 is uh, uh, um okay so no so this means i haven't wrote, wrote this correctly i haven't wrote this correctly 3 has a pre image c and a pre image d actually तो इसका मतलब है कि आई हैव आई हैव दिस बन गया ना नहीं 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 ये इसको फिर ठीक करना चाहिए तो फिर आपने पहले क्यों नहीं बताया ये 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 बन गया हम हम कहेंगे हो गया या जो भी हो गया ठीक है सो नो टू एलिमेंट्स इन ए share an image actually yes so this would be the correct way to say an image in b so koi bhi do elements jo hain any two elements in a should not share an image actually okay should not so we see that c and d share an image which is 3 so this is not an onto function okay so but this is a layman understanding actually i want to write a precise definition i want to write a precise definition so how should i say okay so the best way to 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 say the precise definition is to mathematize this 
uh, definition actually. Okay. So what does what does it mean? Distinct elements in A. So let's take some A and say A prime from A such that A does not equal to A prime. Okay, let's take two elements from A, which are distinct. Then their outputs must also be distinct actually. In other words, F of A should not be equal to F of A prime, right? So I'm gonna say, <coughs> a function F, by the way, this FCTN is going to be always my shortcut for function. A function F from A to B is, is one, one. Chika, yeah, injection, yeah, injectivity, yeah, injective. If what happens for any A and a prime two elements from a such that a equal a does not equal to a prime implies that f of a does not equal to f of a prime do you agree with me that this is a correct description of you know this that distinct elements are have the distinct images yes sir Okay. Okay. Good. But you know, it, it is our habit to always write the things in, you know, positive form. Now this statement is, is in the negative form actually. So how can I write into the, it in the positive form or contra positively. So here's, here's the thing, which is contra positive. So what would be the contra positive? The contra positive is going to be that for any A and A prime in A, if F of A is equal to F of A prime, then A must be equal to A prime actually. A prime. So if you can verify this condition for a function, okay? if you can verify this condition for a function, then your function is injective or one one. Okay, then your function is injective or one one. And here is a warning. Here is a warning, a caution. Keep in view, what was the second condition when we defined when a function is well defined? The second condition for well-definedness of function was that if A is equal to A prime, then F of A is equal to F of A prime. So these two conditions are different actually. So being one one is really the converse of this second statement actually. So don't mix them. So if A is equal to A prime, then F of A equal to F of A prime. This is the second condition in the condition when you want to prove that your function is well defined actually. But here, in order to verify that a given function is injective, it is enough to verify this actually. Okay, it is enough to verify this that if f of a for any a and a prime, if f of a equal to a prime, then f of a equal to you know, a equal to a prime actually. For example, let's do one example. So what are examples of some of these functions? For example, so here's a, here's a function. For example, I'm saying that take an F from R to R and define say f of x equal to, I don't know, e to the 2x plus 3. Okay. By the way, first verify is this a function? 
is this function well defined this would be an interesting thing to verify that is this function well defined then you can prove that is it one one so in order to check that this function is one one what you need to show you have to show that you have imagined two x and x prime such that um, f of x is equal to f of x prime from this can i deduce that x is equal to x prime so if f of x is equal to x prime what does it mean it means that e to the 2x plus 3 is equal to e to the 2x prime plus 3 right so from this equation, can I deduce that x is equal to x prime? What should I do? <clears throat> what should I do? So take anti-log on both sides. Okay, take yeah. anti-log anti on both sides. Take, take say log here and take log here actually. Sorry, take log on both sides. So when you're gonna take the log, what you're gonna get? You're gonna get two x plus three, and you're going to get 2x prime plus 3. Then you can, you know, cancel out 3 from both sides. You know, you're going to get 2x equal to 2x prime, and then you can cancel out 2, so you get x equal to x prime. So this is really the proof that, hence, your function f of x equal to e to the 2x plus 3 is, is 1, 1. is one more. Chika? <clears throat> How about, so here's a, another example, and let's see that whether this function is one, one or not. By the way, I know the definition of one one can you give me the condition or the definition when a function f is not one one what would be the definition and condition that f is not one one anyone So whenever you see that when something is true, you should also see that when that thing is not true. So you have to just negate the definition. So what was the definition again? Sir? DJ. Sir, if you say that Sir, A jo, sir, A barabar jo, A prime ke hai. Uh -huh. But you have, to, oh, you, have sir. To, you have to say it precisely. So you have for A and A prime, any A and A prime in A such that F of A equal to F of A prime implies um, A equal to A prime. Okay, so this negation, what would be the negation of this statement? So are there some A and A prime in A? Can you find some A and A prime in A? such that f of a is equal to f of a prime but a does not equal to a prime so if you can show this for something if you can find two particular elements from a whose images are same but their outputs are not same your given function is not one one it may be a function it may be a function, but not necessarily one more. Take it. Yes, so, so, so let's take an example. So here's an example. So f of x is equal to uh, x minus 2 square plus 1. x minus 2 square plus 1. So how can I prove that this function is 1, 1, or, one, one or not 1, 1? So let's let's think of a 
let's think of a simple function. Okay, let's think of f of x equal to x squared. Is this function one one? Is this function one this one? Not one one. This is not, not one. Not one. So, so tell me then some elements from the domain for which outputs are equal, but inputs are not equal. So you have to you one have, minus one. Exactly. So what you can do, you can take x equal to one and x equal to minus one, or maybe x prime equal to minus one, such that f of x. So we found two elements such that f of x is equal to f of x prime. Okay, obviously, because one is square is same as negative one is square. So this is true, but x does not equal to x prime. So, so on the same lines, can you tell me this function is one one or not? If it is not one one, when this function is one one? Maybe when this function is one one, or when it is not one one. <clears throat> hmm. So, so it's, it's, it's the same thing. You, you just have to think a little bit more carefully. For example, if you take um, x to be one and x prime to be, for example, three. So what would be f of one? So it would be two. What would be f of three? it would be two again, okay? So the outputs are same, but the inputs are not, not same actually. So therefore this function is not one one. So If you see it pictorially, do, do you know how to check it through a picture that whether a given function is one one or not? So for example, if, if I make a plot of this actually, uh, it's gonna be something like this. So how can I know that this function is not one one? Sir, if the horizontal line touch one one So, 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 so one of the way that we have kind of memorized, but probably we never understood that why the horizontal line test works. So, so draw a horizontal line, okay? and if it, it touch the, it, the curve at two points, then this function is not one. Why it is the case, why, why the horizontal line test works? Can someone tell me? Exactly. So, so what is the trouble at, you know, these two points? The trouble at these two point is that the output is same. The value of the function is same. TK, let's call it Y. But it has two different inputs, actually. What is the coordinate of this point? So if, if this is X, then this would be negative X, actually. The coordinates of this point are negative x, y, and the coordinates of this point are x, y. Okay? So through the two different inputs, you are getting the same output. So therefore, this is not a this is not a one-one function. It's a function actually. What is the way to check the function pictorially? Pictorially, kaise check karte? Sir, vertical line test. Then you do the vertical Vertic line test actually that, okay. Draw a vertical line and that vertical line should hit 
what do you call the function at our the you know curve at a single point actually samajh aa rahi hai baat theek hai so this is okay. this is a little bit about um, what do you call the one one function actually similarly we gonna talk later about what are onto functions and inverse function and composition of functions and what are their definitions but we will talk in a more of a theoretical manner actually we will talk mathematically we will not talk just through the lines actually okay so you have to also understand that you know why this vertical line test and horizontal line test and all such kind of these line tests works actually they work because of the definition section theek hai because of the definitions so i think that that's that's really enough for today uh, we will carry on our discussion in uh, in next week theek hai so in next week what i would like to do i would like to have two little sessions two sessions one full and one half so that i can complete basically this course actually so in next week i want to complete the course theek hai so i need a 3 hour session and i need at least one hour session in which i want to cover some bits from you know relation section theek hai mera bhai so try to settle this and if you have questions try to solve you know try to uh, try to arrange some sessions and ask questions actually so we in functions part we spent a lot of time on definition of function because this is important it's quite often people are confused at definition okay we should have a different level of um what do you call um uh, explanation of definition of function we have so so you should being a mathematician you should go beyond this input output definition function is not just input and output okay for a mathematician function is a set actually is really a set which is a bit strange actually that how function can be so it, it, it is a set that satisfies some properties actually theek hai mera bhai so okay. so carry on working solve some exercises about functions and inverse functions okay uh, sorry uh, one one function so we will carry on our discussion actually sir ji 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 sir sir humne sir greater than aur less than ka sir concept padha tha sir sir चैप्टर थ्री में लेकिन सर अगर हमें कोई सीरी, सीरीज दी गई हो जिसमें दस नंबर हो और पूछा जाए कि ना इसमें फला नंबर जो है ना वो सबसे बड़ा है उसे प्रूव करो तो सर कैसे करेंगे सर अगर सीरीज है हमारी वन से लेकर टेन तक हो और कहा जाए कि प्रूव करें कि जो दस है ना वो इनमें से ग्रेटर है सबसे ग्रेटेस्ट है सर तो सर इसको कैसे सर प्रूव करेंगे सर हम तो ऐसे बता दें ना कि दस सबसे बड़ा है then you have to show it through definition or something actually that Depends. all x are less than or equal to you know y actually theek okay? hai so if you have to show that y is bigger than or equal to all numbers x present in a set you will show that x is less than or equal to y that's one way to show it the other way to show it that any number that is bigger than y it does not belongs to that set actually ये भी शो कर सकते हैं कि कोई नंबर जो सवाय से बड़ा है कोई नंबर जो दस से बड़ा है वो सेट में है ही नहीं तो ऑटोमेटिकली दिस इज गोइंग टू शो दैट कि वाई सबसे बड़ा सो सो देर आर सम वेज इज देयर इज देयर दिस काइंड ऑफ एक्सरसाइज इन इन द इन इन एक्सरसाइज शीट एज वेल इस किस्म के नो सर नो सर नो सर अच्छा सर ये सिर्फ जनरल क्वेश्चन है अच्छा ठीक ठीक है वी विल वी विल वी विल लर्न अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ दैट इन एनालिसिस एज वेल ठीक है भाई सो वी शुड गुड लक work hard and uh, this is important good luck okay. sir allah face allah face allah face